Father, receive the glory. Receive more glory in this testimony. Father, Lord, I thank you for this hour. For your children's eyes to be open to know what we are passing through. Father, I pray they will learn from it in Jesus' name. They will be strengthened by it in Jesus' name. They will be determined to go deeper for you in Jesus' name. Their eyes will be open to know what it means to be persecuted by sinners for Christ in Jesus' name. They will know the reward behind persecution. Thank you for everything. I commit myself in your hand. Lord, speak through me. Help me to remember in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everything. I destroy, I arrest every plan of the devil here. Every principalities and powers to distract your children, not to understand, not to believe. I bind those demons in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for this hour. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Please take your seat. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm so happy to say some important things here today to you. Actually, some of my family members that, that have known the, the struggle I went through before coming to Nigeria have been telling me because of what they are seeing on the internet that can't you tell people what you are suffering? They are lying about you, making people to think as if you, you went and take bribe to do this testimony. Some are saying you are false. Some are saying that you just want to be popular. You just want to be rich. Go on and tell them what you suffer. Can somebody suffer like that and stay all alone to lies? But for me, I was like, I don't need to tell people what I'm suffering. God will reward me. And I believe in judgment day that every truth will be revealed that day. But it came to pass, so there are some times we'll sit down, we be doing devotion, I'll be telling my husband, Pastor Rika, some of the things, when he's reading the Bible, the suffering, some disciples, what is happening, then I will tell him, ah, this will resemble what I passed through. He'll be saying, tell me more. So when I'll be telling him, he'll be saying, what? You passed all through this? I say, well, that is what the Lord Jesus told me before. Hallelujah. So he now told me that there will be a time you need to gather all these months and let the world know that this is what a Christian should undergo for Christ and what you are undergoing for Christ. And I said, okay, God will help me. So today I topic this, my persecution to strengthen the holy believers. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you about my persecution 2013 because it all started 2013, the very day I have my encounter with Jesus. That very day, hallelujah. But I want to say something to strengthen because I'm not only going to say my persecution, I'm going to use it like a preaching. Why I'm doing this? Because many churches today, today doctrines, is describing persecution as, as, as an attack to show that you are not born again. If a child of God is passing through attack, they will say this person is not born again. That's why devil is just playing with your life. Some people will say you are, you are evil. You are demonized. That's why people don't love you. Something is wrong with you. Some people will say you are a failure in life, like especially some pastors that decided to preach holiness. People who desire their church or a married woman who want to be for God in holiness and righteousness, they also will pack her away. The family member or friends will say you are a fool. You are a failure. See now, because of whose holiness, and some will say you are a sinner. When you are telling somebody your brethren and say, I'm passing through stress, I'm passing through trouble, I cannot sleep since the day I gave my life to Jesus. Mockering in the, in the, in the office, everywhere. People will be looking at if you are sinners or you are a sinner. That has made many people in the world today don't want persecution in their life. That have been many Christians today don't want to grow up to be a strong Christian because the mentality of persecution is satanic attack and you are not born again or you are not a child of God. They believe that when you give your life to Jesus, everything is okay. Many Christians today will be saying, but they say if I give my life to Jesus, all this struggle will disappear. Why am I still following holiness and I'm seeing all this kind of thing? It's because you are not reading your Bible because Jesus did not promise us 
peace in this world. Hallelujah. He told us he came with the word of confusion in the sense of there will be problem between mother and daughter, father and this, to tell you that you have to carry your cross. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. For you to know that persecution is part of Christianity and it's part of the race to make heaven. First Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, say, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All that will live godly, not all that will come carnal way, this Christianity that you think you are doing, in this kind of way, anywhere you want to do things in the church, nobody, want to, nobody should correct you. That is not the Christianity Timothy is saying here. What he is saying here, what Paul is saying here, what he is saying here, all those that will live godly, holy life, righteous life, the day you will declare in your family, in your marriage, in your school, between your friends and say, today I have decided to live a holy life, a righteous life. A life I will not sin, I will not commit sin. Even in the office, I will never commit any sin again. That is the time your Christianity starts. And that is the time you will know what it means to be a Christian. Because people you don't expect will start persecuting you. Even your so-called pastor that was praising you, my best daughter, my this, will change, will disappoint you, will be persecuting you on the pulpit. You yourself will sit down and say, ah. Those days I used to lie, I was stubborn, I smoke, I steal in the church. Everybody was still loving me. But now I say, I've confessed my sin to my pastor. I want to live a holy life. I'm not giving my parents headache again. My husband, we are not fighting again. Everywhere is collapsing. In the office, I confess I used to do like this. Now I'm not doing, why then they should hate me? I'm thinking this is the time they should love me. But this is what the Bible has said. Hallelujah. One of the things that is that comforted my life and is still comforting, uh, comforting me, making me to feel comfortable in this world, is Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 10 to 14. I like using Saul is conversion as my own because it's similar like that. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and acquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul, Atatius. For behold, he prayed, and I've seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, answered Lord, I have heard by many of this man, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saint at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a choosing vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. When I came across this scripture, because after my conversion, when the persecution starts, started, I was like telling my coordinator then, Pastor Bimba, say, what is happening? I thought the Christians would be happy that Jesus, their Lord, sent a message. This is not this who we have been praying for in the church. God visit us. God send to us. God speak to us. Then the pastor was telling me, it's not like that, Sister Linda. Okay, this one continue. On the day of my, my conversion, before the Lord Jesus sent me back, the Lord told me face to face, he said, I am sending you to the wall of wolves. Many people you will not expect that you think they know my word will persecute you greatly. But the reason why I'm sending you is because many of my children are sleeping in their sin. 
and some are not ready for my coming. My church is dirty, and I've taken the work back on my hand to get my church ready to come to heaven. Then as he was talking to me, he said, don't be afraid, I'll be with you. Don't be afraid, just be in holiness and righteousness, and be where I've sent you, that is holiness of our movement, which I've told you earlier. If you obey that man I'm sending you to, my son, I am the one putting the word in his mouth to teach Christians. If you go there and obey him and practice what he's telling you, don't be afraid of any man. You will be there waiting for me to rapture. Hallelujah. So as the Lord was talking to me, I saw a bean was running. Then the Lord told me, this is Satan running to the wall to go and get ready for you. But don't worry. So when the Lord sent me with two angels back, it was the great speed we are coming. Everything behaved, looked as if I was like falling or something like I'm getting consciousness. Then I opened my eyes in my house, saw my family members. Then people were there. My sister, younger sister, they were happy. Quickly, they now call on the pastor. Pastor member, they were there. Then my elder brother, who is in deeper life, some of you saw him when he came, I think 2017 or 18, minister conference. He came to the camp, okay, when he came to the camp, some of you saw him. So when they call him, because this is somebody that he has been preaching to me since he gave his life to Christ in deeper life. I've never entered deeper life. He has been inviting other people to come to deeper life. Me, I've never stepped my faith in deeper life one day. Only time I attended, I attended Deeper Life Conference was when Papa Kumi went to Deeper um, Sierra Leone and heard a crusade. And why I was there is because of miracle. When he was even preaching, I was saying to myself, finish the preaching and let go into miracle. That is what I'm here for. Hallelujah. So my brother was thinking that all the preaching of Papa Kumi will enter me. After I finished, he was asking, ah, is Linda, is this? Because he was a security to Papa Kumi. After everything, he was calling Linda. Finda said, hmm, come and see her here, nothing changed. So, when they call him and say, brother, our prayer, Finda was saying, our prayer of answer over Linda. God is using Linda, come and see. He quickly picked race with one of his assistant pastor, church pastor. They came to my house with his soldier car. They came to my house. They met me lying down. Why? I have been tired. So when they came, my brother was sitting with me. They, I'm eating. They see my mouth moving. I say, ah, you people are not seeing angels. See, then give me food. My brother said, what is this? So they were there. We started talking, started talking. They are giving me me. So we started talking. Then I fell to sleep again. I went to bed. Then some dogs from nowhere flooded our compound, backing, backing. So they were trying to pursue them. When they stone, some would do as if they want to enter the parlor. So my sister, Finda, now wake me up. That Linda gets up, go into the room because I was lying in the parlor. That there are some dogs. We don't know where they come from. My brother is trying to chase them out. We are praying. So get up. So as I get up like this, then ah, which kind of dogs are they? Very plenty dogs. We cannot rest. Even the neighbors were like, ah, where are these dogs they are coming from? They are just there. You cannot move them. So we started praying. Father, what is happening? Then they, that was my first time to see open vision. That is the time I knew that God has given me a gift to see. Then I now saw, then they are seeing dogs, but me, I was seeing human beings. Then I told them, I said, ah, these are not dogs, they are human beings. I said, no, they are dogs. Then one of the dogs came in front, and when he was backing, but I now recognize him to be one of our bishops in our country. And told me in that, in that vision that said, we are here, we have heard that you have got a message. Listen and listen very well. And it was a dog form. And he was telling me that if you want to live long, drop that message. Don't expose us. But if you had in your heart, this is just the beginning, you will, you will die. So I was afraid. I was, I was afraid. I was telling Finda, he's a human being. I was calling the pastor name I was seeing. Then my brother, all of them, they were afraid. We started praying. Then the Lord Jesus said, raise up your hand and command earthquake. So I raised up my hand. 
But there was some beads. You know these beads that was on my hand? Because the day the Lord visited, I was having all this Jezebelic thing on my hand. So when I raised up my hand, my hand was very, so heavy like a rock. I said, Lord, I can't raise you. He said, because you have the property of Satan there. Dismantle it. Then I quickly told Fina, please, remove the beads in my hand. Then when I did my hand like this, the falseness, it was a glass I was seeing set up. Then I told Fina, remove the falseness in my hand. It's, they are seeing me through there. It was through knife to remove all this ness. I was not even feeling the pain. Then when they finished, my hand became like paper, very light. Then the Lord said, command earthquake. Then when I raised up my hand, I hit the ground. In the spirit realm, this is how they were doing that. This, they disappear, and all the dogs started running. Then my brother was so afraid. He was like, hey, something is going on my sister. So that's why when the persecution arises in Nepal life, they call him to tell him, that, do you believe? He said, I believe. Because what I saw that night, and this my sister, pastor, is because you don't know her. If you knew her before, when you see her now, you will know that it's only Jesus that will change this one. So that day passed. In the morning, one of the brothers, Brother Sengova, went to his school where he was teaching. We were waiting because the Lord told us we should pray and get ready to face the world. So in the morning, he now told me that, Sister Linda, I'm coming. Let me go and check to my school and take permission to go out. So when he went to his school, they, he was trying to tell the people, gather the people to tell them that, ah, God has visited my sister that see what God is saying, see what God is saying. Before they gather the people, when they gather before the principal, want to tell them that, uh, because he have explained to the teacher, see miracle, hey, my sister-in-law, come and see what is happening oh, yesterday night. She was saying, okay, this morning, if you see what happened. So the teachers, they were, hey, let's preach to this children. Everywhere, fear, fear took all over my country. People are walking in the street. Somebody will say, have you heard? You are still having yari on your head. Jesus will come just now. Remove, please, please, remove it for me. Remove. It was like that in our country. So when the teachers, they heard, they were afraid. They told Brother Charles to speak to the people. Before he opened his mouth, one of the girls came out and pointed at him and said, they have summoned all of us in a marine that Sister Linda have come with a message. Go and tell her. That message will not leave this country. Small child, or a small girl about, uh, I don't know how many, but it was in like JSS, maybe two or three. Openly and begin to manifest before them. They started praying, praying, praying. The principal followed Charles and said they should come to my house. So they came to my house. They told me that this is what one small girl said about you. Then I said, God should help me. The message I, I brought, I'm not even delivering it yet. What is happening? Everywhere is shaking. Then Pastor Beba came to me and said, one of our units want us to go and pray, pray and testify there. So we went there. So we went there. It was a university, one big university. So they gathered the youth that God has visited a youth like you want to testify. So people gathered, they crowded there. So I saw one girl sitting from behind, coming front, sitting in the middle, coming from, ah. So because others, when I talk about Yerin, they will say, hey, you know, you student, eh, hey, hey, can we live like this so that we don't make any noise? But she was doing as if she's understanding what I'm saying. So she come in front. So in my heart, I was like, if this is the only girl that will even believe, that's good. So when he came in front, after he finished where we were going, we have not gone too far. Then the chapter, the unit leader called Pastor Bemba and said, Pastor, please, you people should turn back. Pastor said, what happened? He said, one of my girls in the house, she's confessing. Pastor said, what happened? Please, you people should turn back. I have seen the person that is killing us in this house. You people should turn back. Then we turned. When we came, the girl neck was like this. Raise your head up. He said, no, there is a man standing here. Only one finger, the man pressed and said, you are very stubborn. Go and confess. The neck is like the whole wall is on her neck. So please, they should pray that this man should leave her neck. Then we asked her, what happened? She now said that all the witches in this area, when they heard that Sister Linda is coming, they now told her that who will go and face her. 
So she now volunteered herself, and all of them put their power on her that we should make her to die in that pulpit. This girl will, will, should not carry this message anywhere. So that was why when she was sitting behind, she sent a power. The team missed me, so he came in the second row. He fell a shoot again. Nothing happened. Then he came in the front row, face to face. And me, I was thinking that she's understanding the message. She like it. I never know she's coming in front to get me closely. So she now said that when she gets so close in front row, when he want to release a evil power on me, then he saw a man standing by me with a ship, a tiny ship with a staff. Then he, she now said that, ah, so this is the power behind Sister Linda Bar. Okay, this is her own power. So she now wanted to attack them immediately. She said she did not know if the man walk or the man fly. He just saw the man by inside. Then the man pressed her neck. And the, the, <laughs> and the man told her, amen. I never knew this was going on. And the man told her that, I have sent her. You can't stop her. If you want your deliverance, go to her, confess, and let her pray for you. So this is why she was confessing. What have you done in the chapter? Come and seek confession. She started calling names of people. How, when they are doing chapter meeting, she will go behind Carly's son, put in the gen. No chapter meeting. Everything just die off. And he begin to call some name. That Sister Linda, this message, if you are not strong, I'm telling you, the people that are waiting to destroy you, there are more. So then I was telling Pastor, I said, God should help me. When the Lord gave me this message, the Lord told us that in Sierra Leone, the sin is too much my country. That we should ask the Lord for mercy because the Lord Jesus told me that the Father has stretched his sword of judgment upon that land. That we should go to the National Stadium and fasted seven days and pray for cleansing and mercy. Then I now told the Lord, I said, who, 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 who give us the money? Because to rent the National Stadium, I'm over, only as if I'm over, just as... It's, it's a small ministry. How can me, see me, where did I have money to come and gather people in the stadium? The Lord now told me that the president will be the one to give you the money. Eh? Me, did I know the president? I only see him in TV. Ah, ah. So when I told Pastor, remember, ah, he too was like, eh? The president? Sister Linda, did you hear well? <laughs> then I told him. I said, ah, I heard the Lord very well. And the Lord gave us two weeks. So we now begin to write to the head of state uh, in the office of the president. This, that, we send letter, send letter. Nothing was happening. One week passed. One week, some days, the pastor remember, I said, the day that the Lord gave us is passing, sister. Then so some people in the movement was, is it true that she had? Is it true that God said, hey, this is embarrassment? Is that? Then me, I was just confused. Then one of the pastors that God say that we should team up to share this good news, Pastor Mambu. He was not around. He actually went to America. They told him that the sister have an encounter, so he went to pray. So when he was praying, Lord, are you the one that sent this lady? The Lord said, yes, and back her up. So, she, so he now called me and said they should bring me to him. So when I went there, I told him everything. He now told me that the Lord told him a year ago that he's going to bring a revival that he should gather his people. He was thinking that he's the one the Lord is saying he should, he should, he will do the revival. But there's a time somebody told him about holiness of our movement, that the Lord say, this is the movement, join them. So now that you, you are telling me the Lord say, I should affiliate with holiness, join them, it is true. So he confirmed it. So he now told Pastor Bemba that I should come to his workers and uh, minister conference. They were having, he gathered people to come and hear his pastors. So when I went there, I testified that they now recorded it on their phone. This is how the thing went, wildfire. And there the Lord now said that there are names of pastors that he's going to give me to expose their sin if they did not heed to his warning as he's telling them now. So everywhere in my country, everywhere, Sister Linda, Sister Linda, in the television, in the radio, when you tune this radio, you will hear, good afternoon listeners, now we are here with Pastor Dees, Pastor Dees, from this church, we are here to talk about Sister Linda. My brother will say, change this station, let's go to another one. As you go there, go, yeah, good evening, my brethren, uh, my listener, now we are here with Bishop Dees, we are going to talk about Sister Linda. My brother said, ah, ah, 
We turn TV station, pastors are there, they distribute themselves. As you now have, they call um, PF, um, um, PFM here, we will call them in Sierra Leone, body of Christ. They now take over, all over. Then they begin to say, the bishop was saying that, the Lord says, Sister Linda is a strong demon. She came from the sea. He called one sea name. He said, Finda was standing by my right arm. My younger brother was standing by my left. And me, I was coming under the water. They called the name that people should rise up. Oh, the church should pray or else. The Lord says, Sister Linda is a strong demon that you need prayer. They now declare prayer. All churches that are with the body of Christ, like you say, PFM, that churches that are with PFM, they declare fasting and prayer for Sister Linda to die. So I will be in the car like this going and you will see people praying. I was crying because these are my people. These are, they are not lying. You will see people going to their church. Where are you going? We are going to pray. That demon must die, Sister Linda. Some of them don't know me. They will pass me. They don't know. Some will be standing and say, we know her. Ah, she's a witch. Ah, somebody will say, I know her from this place. And this is how you will sit down in the night to hear my phone. That sister Linda coming from the Sea of India, die. Eh? Begin to hear all kind of speaking in tongues. I will be lying in my house, hearing them praying all night. The people are suffering under deception because the pastor deceived them to make them think that I'm a demon. They didn't know that I brought a word that would save them. So a people, crowd of people will know it. They will be fasting for me to die. So when this thing continue like this, then one day when we are coming from the church of Pastor Mambo, we have a tire flat at the place. Then the Lord told me, get ready today, you will see the president. Then I turned to Pastor Mamba. I said, ah. The Lord said, I will see the president today. Pastor Mamba said, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so Finda, everybody was in the car. Finda said, okay, let's go. I know the way they answer. It was like, hmm, we only have one week. And now you say the Lord will see the president. What are we going to do? So as soon as we reach my home, Finda was bringing out the key to go and open the, the house. So as Finda carried the house key to go and open the house, then the phone rang. Then she picked and said, hello. Then this person said, Hello, are you Sister Linda? Then Finda now said, because it was a fearful thing, the voice was very big. Then Finda said, who are you? He now said, you are speaking with the president. Then Finda ran and carried the phone to Pastor Bemba and said, take, I did not hear well. Then Pastor Bemba now take the phone and say, he to use that big voice. I said, hello, who is speaking? Then Pastor Bemba, then the man said, is this the line of Sister Linda? Then Pastor Bemba said, yes. He said, this is the president. I want to speak. Then Pastor Bemba ran, carried the phone to me. I said, ah, what is this? I was inside the car. Then Pastor Bemba said, answer, answer. Then I picked the phone. I said, hello. He was getting tired. I said, is this the number of Sister Linda? Then I said, yes. Who am I speaking with? He said, this is the president. I want to see you. Then I said, the president, he said, yes. Hallelujah. Then he said, do you want me to send my escort to come and pick you up? Then I now say, hold on, sir. Then I told Pastor Bemba. He said he wanted to send his security to come. And Pastor Bemba said, no. Tell him we are coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I now told him, I said, my pastor will bring me, sir. He said, how many minutes? I said, well, we are a little bit far, maybe 30 or 35 minutes. We are not too far from your place, but we'll manage and come. So, okay. So, as we reach at the president's lodge, at the gates, security everywhere. The car is this push and start, push and start car. So, when we reach there, the security is, hey, 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 what kind of car is this? So, that we are blocking the car. Uh, do you miss your way? What happened? <laughs> so, Hallelujah. Then Pastor Bimba now pulled his head and said, no, we are here to see the president. He said, what do you mean? They say, I am here with Sister Linda. Then the soldier said, hey, Sister Linda. Then they begin to touch me. Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Please pray for us. Hey, hey, you see Jesus. Tell Jesus to promote me. I've been a sergeant for long. I've been this for long. Tell the Lord to remember my promotion. Please, when you go to see the president, beg them for us. They were just... So, and I saw a man came and said, this is Salinda. Okay, drive behind or they will follow them. We will reach, the place is very big. We read gate after gate. Then we will reach to the main side. They now told us to come down. Then when I came down, then as I was going, Finda want to follow Pastor Bema, want to follow them. The security man said, no, only Sister Linda. The Finda was afraid because the message the Lord gave me for the president is a raw, raw, evil, you know, when you talk about sinful politicians that have put their hand in secret things. So they, they were afraid that this, they will kill her there, who will fight the president? So Finda now said, no, I can't leave my sister, I must be with her. Then the man said, push behind. In other security way, move behind. Then I turned to Finda and said, don't worry, I will come back. Pastor Bima said, okay, carry your phone, anything, call us. The man said, no phone, we go in to see the president. So, and I said, no problem. Me, I was peaceful, no problem. So when we enter in, as I enter, everybody is peeping from that place. Hey, hey, is this a sister? Hey, hey, they... Because I want to tell you, my people, it was a message that put my country as if we're in a sanction mood. Bars, many bars closed, all this beer parlor. Hotels, we are not having customer. All these saloon people closed. They were burning the attachment in the main road. People were changing. It was like something is going on in the country. A fear was everywhere. God just want these pastors to kill him, like my country should be revived. But they now notice that if we now allow this girl, this girl will scatter our church. So they now fought against it. So when we reach there, the announcer will sign. I sign. I drop my phone. Then I enter into the president office. He was busy writing, writing. So I was standing. So when I saw him like this. A little fear entered me. I said, hey, I've entered this deep, deep place. This message is very strong for this man. Who will I do? So I was, I was afraid. Then the Lord Jesus said, I am here with you. Go and sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So as I was standing, he just gave me that kind of reckless kind of look and then bend down. He said, without even saying, Okay, they say I should wait a little. I should continue. So, as I was standing there, no, even a good welcome to say, come and sit down. So, I want to go and take my seat. The Lord now say, no. The one that is speaking to you is greater than him. He should be the one to welcome the king of kings here. <laughs> then I stood up. I was not sitting. Then he raised up here. They say, oh, sorry for my manners. Please sit down. Then I went and sat down. Then as I sat down like this, he now said, yes, uh, actually I received your letter. Then I discarded it because the, the body of Christ pastor, when I call him, he, have they verified this message that they say, God, Jesus say, he want the girl to see me. Is he coming from the body of Christ like PFM? Did, are they aware? Then I said, don't listen to her. She's this, she just wants money. She's just lying. Don't, she, and throw the letter, sir, don't bother. So he threw the letter in the office and, and discarded it. So after three days, when he came to his office, where he was sitting down, the letter appeared before him. So as he was seeing the letter, he said, ah, is it two letters they sent to me? But I said, I've discarded this letter. Okay. Then his mind was saying, I should listen to this lady. So I'm not calling you here because of your pastor told me, they have said that you are not of God. So me, I've just, I don't know what is making me to call you. That is what the president said. Then I now told him, I say, it is the Lord that made you to call me. Then he now say, what is the message the Lord gave you for me? So I wanted to go straight to the message. The Lord said, start with your past life. So I started telling him my past life. As I want to reach to the into those of what the evil he have done, I was a little bit afraid. Then the Lord said, you are afraid of me or him. He cannot kill you. So I started telling him deeper things that up to today as I'm talking, 
he have respect for me. I speak with the Hela sister. Because what I told him, he said, nobody have told him. It's a secret thing done by himself. By, because of power, but God should show him mercy. So I told him deeper, deeper things. The eye was red. He removed the glasses. He was looking at me. Me too, I sit up while I said, today is today. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I started telling him, telling him, all oh, even things the command the commitment he made he was a christian he's a christian and he, when he was growing up he had the fear of god all the commitment he made even before i was born i told him in the primary school what you said in a field what you say he was looking at me and said when were you born i told him my age how many years i was not even born that time he was like it's only god that knows this then he now told me that sister my sister linda can you do me a favor? That, so what is this? Uh, can I employ you so that you can be my person that will be praying for me? <laughs> ha. Then I now told him, I said, no, the Lord did not say I should walk. The Lord said the work he has given me is bigger than any work for man. They said, no, you can come as you want just to pray because this thing you are telling me, this is how pastors are coming and telling me that God is happy with me. God is happy with me. They are not telling me this. And now see, the Lord is angry with me. Then he now told me, he said, please, people do not know what is on this seat. It's when you sit there. That the people that put you on the seat, if you don't dance to their tune, you are gone. So many things I put my hand in, it is not my will. I know Jesus don't like it. But I put my hand because I am ruling two religion, Muslim and Christian. So you have to please them. Then I now told him, I said, you took oath to God and said, when you become a president, you will build a worship center for God. Since you become a, a president, a Christian president, you have never recognized God. But see what happened to the former president that was a Muslim. Build one of the biggest mosques for the Muslim. And the Lord said, anytime you people come on power, Christians, forget him. And you took an oath. You know you are not supposed to be on this seat. He is the Lord that brought you because of your oath you took. I saw him where, when, and how. He bent down and said I was in tears. Then I said, the Lord Jesus, I should tell you that if you don't gather the people in the stadium to pray for this nation, he will raise the people up against you that this seat you are enjoying will be hotter for you. Then he now so is that all? I say yes. The Lord said we should gather people because the sin that is producing in this our country is more than the people in the country, and the Lord is angry with the people. Then he now say, okay. Then who is the pastor? I now told him. I now call. They now call Pastor Bemba in. He now told Pastor Bemba that we will arrange it and know what to do. Then we left. So when he, he traveled that week, so he told the police they should give us the stadium. We try, we get the stadium. The very day for the program, the pastors, they went and told the police that Muslims have gathered somewhere to bring religious fights. That Sister Linda said they should burn the mocks. And now they want to go and give a stadium to testify. If fights break out, they will not blame the others. That also. So the police went and said, well, the information they have gotten, they, we should not use the stadium. So as we are there, Pastor Mambo have a voice of the Lord. The Lord told him that, go to the radio station. So we went to the radio station. We were everywhere. We start the program first day, second day. We received a letter from the body of Christ that they call themselves the big, big pastors that uh, we now want to listen to Sister Linda. We have now come to our senses. We want to listen to Sister Linda. That please, can you people come and meet us after the city? You will go for a, maybe like eight hours you are going or out of the place. That there is a place there we want to go and meet to, to sit and settle this thing so that she will testify to us. Then the pastor now said, ah, why will you people want to carry this girl out of the city, that far place? We have plenty of place here to settle. You people have churches in the city. Why do you want to carry her to that place? So we are not interested for them. So the next meeting they held was, we are going to tell her to come again. And we, are, we will arrange a assassin people, bad boys. And when we are in the meeting, they will come and open fire. They will shoot us so that people will not believe that we set it up. So after they finished this meeting, the secretary, one of the pastors that was with them, they all of them took oath that we will not say this thing till we die. So as they were going to their car, 
the Lord spoke to one of them and said, look at you people. You are now fighting to cover your sin and say this poor girl is evil. When pastors are gathered to kill an innocent soul to cover up their sin, now you, listen to me, it's in your house. You are now going to bring Sister Linda to your house until the next place I will take Sister Linda to. The pastor turned. People, it's like one of the Pharisees, the Lord commands to hide Jesus. So he was confused. I said, hey, because the bishop have told him that we must kill this girl. And him, he know everything about the plan. So he quickly reached home and told the wife that God have told me. He started repenting. Then the wife now said, let's call Pastor Bemba because they know themselves for long. So when he called Pastor Bemba, he now told Pastor Bemba that he want to see Sister Linda. Pastor Bemba was afraid. He said, no, you can't see her. You know you belong to those people. Why do you want to see her? He said, my brother, come and see me. And explain all the evil plan they have planned to kill me. That even him is part of the plan. And this thing he's going to do after everything is going to run away from the country. As I'm talking to you, he's not in the country. He abandoned the church and run because the, the bishop said for him to, to hit me in the south that time, blood go for blood. So they were pushing him, he ran away. So he told Pastor Bema that Sister Linda should come to my house. So that night, we were lying in the house. Then we now had a knock at our door around 2 to 3 in the morning. One of our neighbor was hitting the dog. The finger said, who is there? Then finger opened. This is our house. When you, know, you see it before, you know that it's only God that was guiding us there. Because the house don't even have gates. You can just come in and come out anyhow. So when he opened the door, you saw our neighbor. And say, open, open. He opened. He now told Finda, where is Sister Linda? Finda said she's sleeping because she's, he's a drunkard. We know him in the area. So we thought that he have come to because sometimes we'll come and say, please, I'm hungry. Please, you people should give me food. So Finda now said, we don't have food today. What happened? He now said, no. There are some gone men that are looking for Sister Linda. Please, Sister Linda should get up and leave this place now. The Finda said, gone men? He said, yes. I was passing. And then they now call me in a black jeep. I say, you, come here. Then I came close. When I came close, they now say, eh, we are looking for Sister Linda. Then they now ask, uh -uh, what happened? They say, eh, it's our friend. We add, we add that she had a testimony. We want to come and hear. So we want to come and visit her. Then the man says something, whispered to him. They ask them, your friend, you don't know her house. Then the man, he said, drunk and he was drunk. He said, uh -uh, you say it's your friend, you don't know her house. The man said, shut up. If you are showing the place, show us the place. Then he said something, say peep in the car. And when he peeped, he wanted to just say, see the house. They were parking. In between, there's a road. See my house, see his own house. And the people were parking at the road. So he wanted to say, see our house. So before he said like this, he said something struck his man, say peep in the car. When he peeped, he saw AK-47. Then he said, mm hmm Then he now said, ah, you people have passed the place. So when you go down like this, you go like this. Climb up. Go down like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so he started directing and then the other one said, he's even drunk. Get out from this place. They said, ah, you are shouting at me. I'm showing you our place. The man said, let leave the place. Let leave the before they find out. So they drove off. He said, if you see the man, those men, they are muscle. They will scorn those sisters and nobody will see them. So as they left, he was peeping. As they left, he ran into my compound. Because we are just opposite like this fence and this church. He just ran into my house. I said, please, they should call Sister Linda. So I was sleeping. I came out. I said, what happened, sir? Leave this place. Leave this place. Me, I was like, where will I go to? I don't have anywhere to go. All my friends have deserted me for holiness. Family members are on me. My father, my mother's side, they are Muslim. My grandfather said, I must go and apologize to the monks. I must go and apologize. Instead, they have abandoned me. They have disowned me because I say Quran is from hell. So this one, no family was supporting me. My mother's side, they are Catholic. My father sighed because I say Mary, because I say Mary is not to be worshipped. They are angry. They are first say me. I want to bring confession in the church. 
So I was left alone. My best friends, everybody, the only people that told me it was the ministry, Holiness of our Movement, that I came to join that particular time. I don't even knew them. I don't love them before. I didn't love them that, those days. So I was not my church, my own pastor, that they went and asked, is it true that you know Sister Linda? I said to me, I don't know how. One of my friends said, ah, I will not be in this show because this one is boldly lie. Linda that is singing in the church that even you used to say this is my best daughter. Now you are denying her because he is saying that your church is not clean. I was rejected. I was left alone, bombarding me up and down, bombarding me in the radio. Everywhere is hot. You will be buying something in the, in the, in the, in the market. What, God, what really helped me, people don't know me, you will buy something in the market, you will hear somebody, so me, I will be asking her, do you know this sister Linda? If you see her, do you know her? No. Ah. Some people say, yes, I know her. Ah, I know how they bribe her, they give her money, this her. Then sometimes Linda will say, see this sister Linda. Before crowd will come, we will live there. So it was like that. So when this thing happened, they, I now call Pastor Bimba that night that there are some grown men that they say they came around. So Pastor Bimba now said we should leave. So he came and picked me up and told me the story in the car. I am going to carry you to one of the pastors that they were all planning to kill you. We are going to your house. So the pastor told us that we should drop, they should drop me at the junction and cover me like these Muslim people so that they will not see me entering his house because the bishop will kill him. So this is how they cover me, Finda and Sister Ayo. We went and stayed. We entered one of the rooms. He closed us and told us that we should not be making noise there, that when you want to come to us, there is a way you will knock the door, that we should know that he's the one. he make a sound. So me, I was not even, I was like, I'm, I was in a house arrest. I was not going anywhere. I will be in the room. I will hear some of his pastors will come and say, they say this girl have disappeared. They say this girl have disappeared. This girl, we must kill her. Ah, you want to disgrace us? Can you imagine? Now we cannot rest. They say she have part two. She wants to call our name. Then the man that know that I'm inside his house, he say, hmm, hmm, hmm. He said, ah, what happened? He said, eh, we'll still be looking for her. You are not showing interest. I'm telling you, your name is there. You're, he said, you have pro- names of all this uh, body of Christ pastor. And you know you are part of all the man will just say, God will help us. I'm inside, I'm hearing them. Okay, okay, I'm going now. You know, we have meeting. That girl, we, we must kill her. Pastors. So when, he, when they will go like this, he will knock the door and kneel down before me and say, forgive me. This is what, he will tell me the pastor that just came and say, Sister Linda, the church is dirty, as Jesus said. We want to cover our sin, shame, to maintain our members. We don't want this thing to reveal. So as we were there, my elder brother was so disturbed because they were saying, Sister Linda have gone missing. Some bishop were saying she have gone back to the sea. We told you she had gone back to the sea. So my brother was disturbed. Where is Linda? Where is she? So he called Finda. Finda now said, Brother, Linda is in an hiding place. He said, Please show me where she is. So she came, he came there. So during the time of the fasting, they came to know that I'm hiding in one of the pastor house. So the police came. We were in the three days or four days. Then the police people came. See the compound, they came, bab, 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 came down. Yes, we want, Sister Linda is under arrest. Then the pastor was like, hey. Then Pastor Bema now said, please, you people should not rough her, she will come. They said, she should come out. She has brought confession. She will must go to the, to the police now. IG, IG say, we want to, IG want to see her. Inspector General want to see her. The case is before him. How dare her, they were shouting, raining down. So me, I was inside praying. Then Pastor Bimba came and said, Sister Linda, dress up. The police have noticed. They say they want to see. There's a complaint for you. Then I told Pastor Bimba, I said, the Lord said, you should tell them that I will not go anywhere until after the fasting. Pastor Bimba said, hey, me, I can't tell them all. If you see the way they are shouting outside, this one they will not even hear. They will scatter. Let those go. God understand. Oh, we go there. Go understand. So I left him, I walk out. Sister Linda, you will not dress. I said, hold on, sir. So I went there. The policeman was say, where is she? They don't even know me. Where is she? Where is she? 
Then I came, I walked to them. One of the big man was in there. I said, I'm Sister Linda. Eh. Okay, enter the car, you are going to the police. I said, sorry, sir, I cannot go with you. Why? I said, because the Lord said I should tell you I'm not going on. After the fast day, it's okay, it's okay, you can go back. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> The Lord was really with me. Jesus has been proving himself mightily behind Sister Linda. I want to tell you people, this Sister Linda, you see, don't envy me, don't jealous me. I am suffering, I'm suffering for this gospel. And Jesus, if it's not Jesus, I should have died. Because pastors that have money, people that have money more than me, they would have finished me if it was not God. The man look at me and say, okay. They call the police. Let's go. They say, ah, Ogawa. He say, hey, let's go. Let's go. They left. Leave me alone to finish my fasting. The seven days after the fasting, they call. Hey, is she ready now to come? Then Pastor Mima said, they are asking. I said, yes, let's go. Then I dressed and went there. I so went to the police. We so want to see the IG. Do you have an appointment with him? I said, well, my name is Sister Linda. Eh? Sister Linda. Oh yeah, oh yeah, carry up, carry up, carry up. <laughs> I was like, what is this? We went to the IG, he was sitting. They told him that I'm a big woman, I have four children, I'm frustrated, this, that, so they should stop me. <laughs> so when I enter in, and I say, good afternoon, sir. He said, good afternoon. I say, you say you want to see me, who are you? I say, Sister Linda. I say, ah, are you Sister Linda? I say, but they say he's a married woman. I say, no, I'm not married. Eh, okay, sit down. Then he told, because we came there, Pastor Bimba, with Pastor Mambo, assistant pastor, we went. So they now said, okay, they want to deal with me. He wants to speak with me alone. Then Pastor Bimba was a little bit afraid. Then Pastor Bimba now said, sir, he's just a child. Please, you people should don't listen to what the pastor is saying. No, leave her. She can talk for herself. So when Pastor Bimba stepped out, me and him in the office, then he now said, Sister Linda, as I see like this, I've pity you, but I still have to protect my job because we don't want problem. I say, yes, sir. Please, bring out the part two because that is the problem now. The pastors say you have part two that they are naming since I bring it because we want to settle this matter. Then I now told him, I say, you cannot settle this matter because the one that have this matter is bigger than you. He said, what did you mean? Sister Linda, don't behave stubborn, no. Don't behave stubborn, no. I said, sir, I'm not behaving stubborn, sir. I can I said, this one you are talking, it's not that I recorded it here, I have it. This is message that the Lord will be telling me, take paper right now. It's something that is with the Lord. He told me that if they did not act into this warning, this first message I've given out, the way the Christians should behave, the way the church should run, if they did not repent, he is going to expose them. So, He's giving them grace. Why are they? They must, hey, Sister Linda, me, I don't know what to do again, no, because as I tell you now, you are not going, no. You are now under arrest. I said, you can't arrest me, sir. Sorry, sir. Then he said, eh, don't try me, oh. Then the Lord now begin to give me message for him. <laughs> Number one message. I said, sir, you know you are not doing this as a clean walk. You are doing it as a bribe work, and they have bribed you. Me, I say, see the money there. He said, ah, uh -uh, how do you know this? One? And actually, and they came. You know, the the the, the, the pastors. They came here, and they begin to look if somebody hear me. Not that it, on, sister Linda. Okay, truly, they came with this money, but I've not touched it yet. Oh, I've not touched it yet. Then the Lord give another secret about his life, what he did before being here. He now say, hey, this one passed me. Hold on. He now called the assistant. He come into my office. This matter passed me. Then the man came. He's a Muslim man. What is it? He said, this is an Uh huh. She's not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere for causing confusion. You will not go anywhere. You put the country into a state of emergency. How dare you? How would you do like that? Begin to talk, talk, talk. The man said, then the IG said, mm -mm, don't talk so yet. Sit down and listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he now say, uh -huh, you say you saw Gaddafi in hell. Me, I'm a Muslim. Gaddafi is speaking Arabic. How do you hear him? Because Gaddafi only speaks Arabic. 
I said, well, it's you that you are making me to know that Gaddafi is speaking Arabic. I said, because over there, I was wondering if it was Arabic Gaddafi is speaking because it was one language. Everybody is speaking. If I speak my own language, Gaddafi will hear. And when Gaddafi was speaking, the Lord made me to hear because over there, we live by the Spirit of God. So I don't know if you are speaking your language or not. God will make sure that everybody hear themselves so that you will know what brought the other person. There is no secret over, there is no secret in eternity. Then he now say, yeah, then he now say, well, you know, we are here for peace. We don't want problem. And so now they have, uh, the, the, lawyer, the pastor said, the lawyer is going to arrest him from here. This, this, this. Then the Lord told me one deep, evil, ritualist thing he did. You, you call yourself police. Some of these people, they will kill. They will cut their private parts. It is from your hand. He knelt down and said, um, 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 um. You know, this matter, actually, I was saying is church to settle it. You know, church is the one to settle these things. You know, so, um, uh, Sister Linda, please, let this matter end here. <laughs> so, I was just there. Anyone that wants to come and oppress me, the Lord will give me one. They will just bow down. Then the IG of police now say, hey, they should bring food. Sister Linda, you are our friend now. Let's eat together. So when they brought the food, and I told them, no, I'm not hungry, I'm not eating. And I said, no, they thought that I will carry their secrets. No, you must eat. Oh, ah, for friendship's sake now, you must eat. I said, sir, I'm not hungry. And I said, eh, but for me, so that this thing you say here, you will not tell anybody. You know, we, we are just here for peace. Police are your friend, you know. <laughs> and up to today is my friend. He's the ambassador now in, Sierra, in uh, Liberia, Sierra Leone Embassy. He believed and trusted Sister Linda. If he calls Sister Linda, he said, I settled the matter. So he was now, he now told Pastor Bima, he called them inside. That, okay, we have how we will now to settle the matter. So when we were going, he now come because they told him the plan. That's why they bribed him. That if Sister Linda comes here, the bishop said, I don't even know her. But don't allow her to go. Tomorrow she will appear at court. We have planned the lawyer. The lawyer now is going to be telling her that for charging me for definition of bad character, uh, how they call it, that if I did not have any proof that the pastor, maybe I should bring pictures to so that, okay, this bishop, see the evil he have done. If I don't have any proof, they will send me to the prison. And in the prison, they have planned somebody to poison me. And in that poison, because I must eat the prison food, they will poison me, then I will die there. Then the matter is settled. If I don't want to release the part two. And as they, they plan this, they have declared and told them, according to this, their plan. They told the people in my country that give Sister Linda two weeks, the Lord says she's going to die. Because their plan will go like this. They have believing that the police, they have bought the police already. And if the police arrest me and send me to a court tomorrow, court have planned to send me. So in two weeks' time, I will eat the food in the prison. So these things was the man telling me now. And say it's a deep secret. But I want to beg you. He was telling my pastor. Any nearby country you know that Sister Linda will going to let her go. Because I've never seen desperate wicked heart towards this to anybody as these pastors are planning i'm pitying her she's innocent she suffer for nothing so please then he now told pastor if you need money i can if you give you money to make a passport get her out of this place so immediately pastor Bima now said no i have my father in the lord i will call him because the lord gave her message for my father in the lord he said where he said in nigeria so they now call pastor rica so when they called daddy, they now told him what is happening. Sister Linda is going altar scatter. He's not even in the house. The pastor are pushing her. Then daddy now said, oh, we cannot allow her to suffer like that. Okay, buy a ticket and think that everybody, all of you should come to Nigeria. So this is how I left my country. Hallelujah. I was in the airport. I was wrapped like a Muslim woman. Enter the plane, cover my face because the bishop they were looking for me. And the bishop said the statement in each other, if I do not die, he will not rest. 
And this is, was not even a hiding thing. He was so mad that he would be talking anything on the pulpit. And he has money. He's the richest, one of the richest pastor. Or he's the one, he's the richest pastor. So when I came to Nigeria, World War II starts again. After I finished World, World War I, we say War Part One. I came to Part Two. After the, the conference, 2013 Women Conference, so they now thought that the matter have settled. We went to some state in Nigeria, this, that, Sister Linda, people want to hear me. So after some time, they now said, okay, we should go back. Maybe my country crisis is down. Then Pastor Bima now said, the Lord said that Sister Linda should not go yet, that she sent her here for training. So I was not happy. I said, hey, me, I want to go back. If they want to kill me, they didn't kill me. Me, I will not stay. So they say I should stay. So Daddy Rika with other pastors, they went to Sierra Leone. They were having conference. I think it was June or July. So when they left, I was staying behind. Then people used to call. I am from choosing. I'm from choosing. Please, I have questions. So me, I was like, ah, who is choosing? I asked uh, Mommy Rosa Chobi. I said, it's like people, I'm choosing, I'm choosing. I said, it's like choosing name. People like giving their children, I'm choosing, I'm choosing. So she told me, said, no, it's a church name. I said, ah, okay. Said, okay, they are saying I'm, I'm a, like a church name. I said, oh, because anybody they call, I'm choosing, I want to ask a question, I'm from choosing. I said, ah. So, I didn't know the church called choosing. I don't know, maybe now they have opened their branch in my country. When I went, I saw it there. And to my surprise, where they rented their church, it's my uncle building. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the Pandemba Road. But that time when I was there, I didn't know any church called choosing. The church is reigning in my country. That is Redeem, Winner's Chapel, Deeper Life. Yes, but it's not that carry weight. It's Redeem, Winner's, and uh, Christ's Embassy. And these are churches I attended. I was a choir. I attended. The, I was in the choir of Winner's Chapel. All these things. So when I came here choosing, I didn't know. So one day... I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. The Lord told me, this country, Nigeria, is the power, supply, is the supplying power to Christianity worldwide. But I want to show you, majority of the pastors, they are secret sin. I put my arm on my head, I said, wahala. Hey, Pastor Rika will bond me, I said, don't come and kill me, go. Because another problem, the Lord said, get ready. Hey, I hold my chest. I said, Father, yeah, that I'm even idle and peaceful. No problem. If I start now, these pastors will rise up. What will this poor man? I'm looking at that dedica. This man is very innocent. And it's, he have opened his place for us to come and hide and be good. He's good to us. Now, if I start, they will start coming here. <laughs> the Lord say. I have told you, your body is not your own again. I am going to use you anyhow I want. Unless you don't want me to use you, then I will cast you out. Then start. I had part two. Sister Linda was taken in a vision to a church I've never seen in my life. I enter, I pass the people. Where is this? Went down to the underseller. People did not know the place I have on the cellar. I went down there, going down. I saw a demon with mighty tail and was carrying, marching on aprons and other things. Then I said, then the pastor is bowing and taking command power for me. And then I said, God, what is it? He said, this is the God of choosing. And you are going to expose this church because this pastor has left me and have bowed to the devil to deceive many. When I woke up, I told Mommy Rosa Chobe, she sat down and put her on her head. I said, these people are brutality people. Don't say it yet until daddy returned from Nigeria, and from Sierra Leone. So when they came back, I told daddy that when you were not around, sir, the Lord carried me to a church. His name is Chosen. I don't know. But this is what the Lord showed me. Daddy said, hey, we need to gather ourselves. So after he prayed, the Lord, the Lord said, go. Daddy said, you know, daddy, daddy anything for Jesus, kill him. So, daddy mounts up the pulpit and says, Sister Linda will deliver part two. 
As I was delivering the part two, some of our brethren were packing their things, say, fight will break here. So this is how I deliver part two. And then other names were inside. Before that, I was a fan and a lover of John C. Suleiman in the sense I believe I love him those days. He was one of the pastors that I will be buying all his release uh, CDs. I, sometimes I don't go to church, I will just be watching him and Pastor Chris here kill me. When they will do their hand like this, I will put my hand on the TV, receive, I will pray. Like that. So when, this, when he came to my country, 20... 13 January, then I have my encounter 20, 13 February. He, the, the, the bishop that used to invite him any, every year told us that God has given Joseph Suleiman another anointing that now money will be appearing in people's back. Hey, and it's coming in one more time. I told Fina in the house, I said, listen, I know you don't believe this pastor, but all I'm saying is that you will respect me as a senior. All those big, big bags I have, you will carry one. I told my older brother, he will carry another one, me too will carry. For that day in that crusade, we must be there because Finda don't attend those crusades. Finda say, please, please, if it's not watchman, holy, uh, deeper life or holiness, Finda don't go to anywhere. So I told Alade, I'm the elder sister and what I say you should do. So they went. So we were there expecting miracle. And he came and said, the Lord say, money is going to come in people. So some of us were doubting. I don't know how he knew. And I said, see, the Lord said people are doubting there. Somebody said, yes. He says, you know, Jesus has said, Peter should go and bring the money from the fish mouth. They will now say, yes. Then he now say, close your eyes. He pray, 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 pray. Somebody close by me begin to jump and was counting. But in that old stand, we are more than 300 in the stand. You know, it's a stadium. Only that woman that was counting money. And I was very angry. One, two, three, making four is me. Angel, you come and pass and leave me. I'm an orphan. I don't have money in my hand. That was the last, the, the day, it was last cup of rice. I told my people, let's go, God. We even fasted in the house that day. Me, I fasted at God. If you can give us money to buy rice, a bag of rice, I will be okay. And if you see my bag very big, Nothing enter inside. I was crying. So my friend that we went told me, hey, Lynn, you are disgracing us. Get up. Let's go. I said, leave me alone. God don't love me. So when I came back to the house, I was sitting outside. I lift up my hand like that. I say, I said, me, I will not serve you again. You, you are wicked. You bless other people. You say you are the God of the orphan. And you came to the stadium. You didn't even give me money. What is it? I said, hey, God, do you not know hear her. February, I have my encounter. So in the encounter, the Lord Jesus showed me the power behind him, the demons that were giving money. And the Lord said, all this magician money that appear in the people's bag, they have buy their soul already. If I, the Lord, did not intervene, this is how you see people will just be dying. And it is going under his account because it is a spiritual sacrifice. So you don't like now you come and say, tell me your life, I give you money. The way you die is under me. Then the Lord said, you were angry, I save you. See what happened. After this thing I said, he came up to my country and said that the people should not believe Sister Linda that Jesus told him that I'm going to die at in August 2013. That if I did not die, that anywhere they see him, they should not call him John C. Suleiman. My people from Sierra Leone, my friends that we used to go to his stadium, his crusade, we are calling me Sister Linda. Hey, you know John C. Suleiman? He says, see, I have power. He have declared you dead. He says, if you don't come and confess, please, my sister, we have told you, maybe it's not even Jesus. Please. I told them, I say, if it's not God that sent me, I will die. But if it's God that sent me, the battle line I've drawn between him and God, not me. August passed, I did not die. 2013 passed, I did not die. 2014, I did not die. He went to my country, I said, 2015, and told them. The people said, ah, oh, but Sister Linda is still alive. He said, he said that my husband, Pastor Rika, carried me to Auchi, and that the Rika went and kneeled down, begged him, and said that, you know me and my wife, this is where we are getting our living from. When she's going and testifying, people are giving her money. Please, Papa, release the cost for my wife. So you people are in CLA, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria. So I just prayed, God, forgive Sister Linda so that she will not die. So that's why she did not die. 
She thought that I would not go back to my country. After he left, after some months, me and daddy, daddy's speaker is here. Because when they took him to the radio station, that was one of the questions they were asking daddy. They can, is it true you carry your wife to John C. Suleiman to beg him to read the call? Daddy, they can say, eh? <laughs> so the peop my people were like, ah, is he a lie? I said, that's, I, I told them, you people don't believe me, born from the soil. I am telling you, these pastors are fake. He said my husband carried me to him. It's because God has disgraced his pronunciation. He told you people, like, if, he, if I did not die, you people will not believe him. And you people are still seeing me living, going up and down, testifying the same testimony, saying the same thing. I did, didn't, I did not die. God, he said he have power. I did not die. You people will not open your eyes. You are believed. Now see the lie he said again. That won't finish. Choosing won't come up. One day we were in our house. I went up to Mommy Rose Hachobe. So when I came back, somebody ran there and said, Sister Linda, Sister Linda, police have carried Daderica to the police station. Ah, what happened? They have arrested Pastor Daderica. We run to the house. As I came like this, police came and said, You two, you're under arrest. So as I went to the police station, I saw Daderica. The police were shouting at him. You! You, you are not supporting your own Nigerian brother. You are not supporting your own Nigerian. You went and carried a foreigner to speak again. Daddy said, calm down. Sir. No, tell me to calm down. By the time I finish with you, you will know. And then there was a uh, law choosing lawyer. is a fat Igbo man and two pastors. The man was like, the lawyer was telling me, as I came, they said, this is Sister Nina. He now stood up and said, you, you, hmm, after I finish with you, you will pack and go to Sierra Leone. So I was just sitting there. The policeman looked at me and said, I'm going to deport you. Why dare you speak against uh, this man of God? They then begin to open a uh, uh, album. See, see, you say Moka is evil. See him with uh, Papa Kumui. If he's evil, can Papa Kumui shake his hand? He turn again. See him and uh, uh, Oedipo. See him and redeem. He's a renounced man. How dare you? You will deal with you. The pastor said, your own has finished. Your own has finished. Then I, I was getting angry. Then I said, sir, that I was talking to the police. Sir, why are you shouting at us? If you see the way they were talking to that, they me, they jack me, put me down. Then the Lord said, mm -mm. Don't say anything. I have told you that any time they carry before the lawyers, the, the kings, and the governors, don't bother to say what you will say. I will put word in your mouth. <laughs> so, as we are there, they now remove me from that place. Carry me to a detention room to separate me from Daddyrika. Daddy was inside. Daddy, if it's where Daddy see that, see if they won't kill me when I kill me now. Daddy see that like this. <laughs> then they now say you are going to take an undertaking that to Daddyrika that you are not going to produce part two again of Sister Linda. Daddy say why? What is it? Then they carry me. The policeman says, "See, come here. He want to use threatening to to frighten me." Do you want to be safe from this place? And they don't answer. Eh, you don't want to leave this place. <laughs> you, if you see the cell, I'm going to put you there. No fresh air. Now listen to me. You are going to take an undertaking. We will record you. You are going to apologize to Mocha. And then you will say in that, in that recording that you are sorry that uh, they pay you to lie against him. This I was looking at the man. I said, the Lord Jesus wants to save you. Call yourself a police and the lawyer that was there say you say you are a lawyer for choosing you don't even know what the lord jesus want to do and i told the police officer you say you will deport me he say yes i will deport you i say you cannot deport me because i am under a course nigeria and say hello we are one i know my rights you can't deport me if you can deport me go and deport all the nigerians stay in my country that is one two where is he in the law of Nigeria that if you want to say what God say, you should have police permit? Because they begin to tell us, you have sinned against the law. You are not a Nigerian. Don't you know that Nigeria, you cannot just stand on the pulpit and preach anything. You must have police permit. I say, where is it? Where is it in the law? Then the lawyer now say, he take phone, they talk for Igbo. Yeah, she's here. We will deal with her. Don't worry. So when they were talking, I don't bear my head. 
they were bragging. Nobody will deliver you from here. Nobody, nobody. All of a sudden, everybody say all of a sudden. The Lord do his own wonders again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is with us. Then the Lord sent somebody. Senator appear in the police station. Senator Emmanuel Boacha, see him here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Walk straight to the police uh, ogre. As they reach there, they call the policeman with they shout. He is under the influence of bribery. If you see me, he was mad. You, 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 you are not in Nigeria. As he is shouting, they call him. Or guy is calling him. When the man came back, the policeman tongue changed and said, Em, em. Where is Mokka himself? <laughs> he was asking the man. The man said, the lawyer and the pastor say, eh, he traveled, I'm his assistant pastor. Eh, so he says, he say, ah, uh -uh. I was thinking it's you, uh, you are Mocha. How can him that have the problem of the people, the people are here, he is not here. You people should go. When he come, you people should come back. <laughs> then when they entered there, Daddy Rika was telling us that, when Senator said, ah, you arrested my pastor. Said, the man said, me, arrested your pastor. Who is he? How can I arrest your pastor? Say, ah, this is my pastor. Oh, I did not know. Sorry, sir. Actually, this is how the matter finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to read. Let me tell you what God will do. Turn to the book of Mark, chapter 15. I'm running up. Mark, chapter 15. From verse 42 to 45. When Jesus died, the disciples don't have the boldness or even have the infantry or the money to go and stand before Pilate for the body. Is it not so? We don't have money to fight Mokka in that prison, in that police station that day. They have the money. They were on top. They, pol they have bought some of these police people. Even to the Oga was on their side. And that particular day, if not that God says anything, we would have slipped there. Only God knows what they would have planned to do to us. Because the man said, you, if you see the cell we have prepared for you, that the place where they will go and close me. After you went, your head will correct. Your head will correct. Threatening me, jacking me, sit down here. No, get off from that place, sit here. And then the, the pastor said, Yes, you say you have God. The God of choosing will disgrace you, was insulting me there. I didn't say a word. So this is what happened. Mark chapter 15, verse 42 to 45. And now, when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, that, that is the day before the Sabbath. Joseph of Amatia, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly. Senator came and entered boldly, boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. And calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Why? Because Joseph was rich. He was a renounced man. All this one that the Pharisee will say, we'll see how they will carry his body. We'll see this, that they have covered his death. The man just walks straight. This is how Senator walks straight and redeem us. They thought that we don't have, we too don't have people that know government. We thought that that matter has finished. We were rejoicing. I was in my house. Then I had a call from Pastor Mambo from Sierra that Sister Linda, be very careful. As I'm talking to you, there are two, two pastors from Lord Choosing from Nigeria that just left my house in Sierra Leone. I said, eh? They have, they have been looking for a way to, so that they will deport you from Nigeria. And that time that these pastors went to Sierra Leone, Mokka declared that the Lord told him, that I'm going to die, disappear, they will not see me again in Nigeria. As the people were praying for me to disappear, he was planning his secret plan so that they would deport me from Nigeria. So when they will not see me again in Nigeria, hey, the, the, the people on will, hey, Mokka have power, she have disappeared. She, he sent some police and some pastors to my country. Luckily, when they went, they went to the CID of police. And when they went there, they now told them they want to see 
the, the CID police. And when they went, the man that they are going to meet, there is the Ogagbatagbata. They never knew the man get converted through Sister Linda's testimony. And even the man, as I'm talking, one of his daughters that the wife put to bed, give her the name Sister Linda because the man said, God used me to transform their life. So when they went there, they met this man. They never knew the man is a holiness member, but he's a police officer. They now told him that, please, we want, once a union is giving us problem in Nigeria, so we want a police letter that you people will write wanted so that we can give Nigerian police so that they can deport her. Then the man will say, what is the thing that the Sierra Union is doing? Hey, he's just going up and down, making people to leave our church. He's talking, talking, and this girl is causing problem. We cannot rest. So we want her, you know, we just want her to leave Nigeria, let her come back. So the man said, but you say I should write, a, a, but this person don't have any criminal case. He said, yes, that's why we have brought money. They open, he said, if you see dollars, open and say, we will give you just, just what we need is the letter. And this man's name is Pastor Brown. Anybody go to say, don't ask CID Pastor Brown, he will show you. So then the man now say, mm, so who is the person? Uh, her name is Sister Linda. Please, this girl is giving us headache. We want her to leave. We carry her to police. We want the police to deport her, but the police say she know her right. You know, we are all echoers. We cannot deport her if she don't have any criminal case. But if Sierra Leone police write and say she's under, she's she's wanted in her country, the Nigerian police now will not deport her. She will not come again to Nigeria, so that she will just out of sight, so that we will have peace in our church. Then the pastor now say, listen. That sister Linda you are talking is my mother in the Lord. <laughs> listen and listen very well. Anything that go wrong with her there, you are on under, I'm recording you people now. I will hold you and that your church responsible. Now leave my office. They left fearfully and shamefully. I went to Pastor Mambo, and we had that sister Linda, is your daughter, you, you, she was with you. Please, sir, we want you to tell her to come back. We are tired. She's giving us headache now. So which church are you people coming from? He said, from the Lord chosen. Then the man said, well, where is, where is sister Linda staying in Nigeria? And we heard that she's staying in Abuja. He said, well, me, I don't know where she's staying in Nigeria. I already know that she's in Nigeria. When you go, give her a phone so I will speak to her. The man said, ah, ah, how can I give up? He said, hey, now, how do you want me to call her to come back? The man now said, listen, that girl is God that sent her. Go and sit down. You pastor, you are fighting for your overseer. Go and ask God, who sent who? Is God sent your pastor or Sister Linda? You are leaving all the way in Nigeria to come and bribe us here to test Sister Linda to come back. So when they left, even Pastor Rika was there when Pastor Mabu called. And I told that the Rika said, see you. Pastor Bamboo is telling me that I should be very careful. Two pastors came from Nigeria with a portfolio of money to bribe them so that the police will write for Sister Linda wanted from choosing. Then I said, these people are serious. I was taking it as a play. This church, what is happening? Is this the, how Jesus say? If they say I'm a witch, is it how you should take persecution? What is the problem? Anybody that left the church, the people who come in, Sister Linda, pray for me. Choosing people are fighting me. They are laying calls on me. They even come to my house. Anybody, any past member of their church will be complaining and say, these people carry me to police, say, by fire, by fire, I will not leave their church. Brutality. I say, ah, what kind of church is this? It begins again on spiritually. There's a time I had a dream, some of you had, that a child was deceiving me. I thought it's a child as I want to go out in the, in the revelation. The Lord said, don't go. Tell, her, tell this child to reveal herself. I said, who are you? Then he turned to a fearful demon and say, I'm the God of choosing. You are exposing my church. I will deal with you. He did it sound like this. The ground open was displaying power. That you see, I will crush you. My brother, my sister, um, I was under attack. There is a night we finished minister conference. I was lying down. Sister Rosa Chobe was lying down. One other sister was lying down. Then the voice said, get up and pray, or else they have released madness on you. I woke up. I saw somebody jump out. 
I was shouting, my head, my head, everybody, people, pastors, they came out. That time was alone with God. What happened? Sister Lina is shouting, my head, my head, my head, what happened? My head is like it's going now. Then I saw a bean pass. A sister that was sleeping in the parlor said, it's so in between, a madman enter. What is happening? Then immediately he had me shouting. I was telling them, something is behind that door, something is behind that door. What is there? The tail was shaking like this. As he turned his face, it was the, the demon, God of choosing. Then I was shouting, I was almost collapsing. That the Rika came, the other pastor, come and see prayer. Prayer. That night, Sister Linda head was hot. I can't bring down my head, it was like this. I said, God, what have I done? Why my suffering is like this? Why people are behind me? Hey, I am suffering for Christ, but I count it joy. We went to Abba. They say Sister Linda will not testify there. Problem upon problem. The people, the hotel we went to, opposite. There are some boys, they were smoking there, watching us. Somebody said we should leave that hotel. They have planned, choosing people have planned for Sister Linda. They will kill her here. We quickly picked race and left. We went to Kaduna as the Dedica is saying, hey, if Sister Linda mounts that pulpit, today is bloodshed. They were outside, raging. Ah, ah, these people. We went to Enugu. They almost bring down the hotel gates. That was 2013. That Sister Linda will not testify in Enugu. That out there, choosing people, dancing in the front, rubbing themselves on the mud. Dirty like this on the place. They were carrying. We will tell her we are crazy for mocha. We are crazy for mocha. This that they were insulting me. All kind of words. Some will go to my WhatsApp page. Some will go to Messenger and deceive me and say, I want to ask you a question. When I accepted his or her friend request, they will insult me. We will kill you. We will drink water in your skull. You talk against mocha, God will finish you. Every kind of things. I told them that if this church, you say you have the spirit of God and you are children of God, is it how you behave? There's a pastor who was calling me from Suleja. He said, Pastor, in choosing. And called me and said, Hello, I'm pitying you. We are starting our prayer tomorrow. By the time we finish, you will die. I said, Thank you, sir. <laughs> Day three, he called. You are still hiding your heart, eh? <laughs> the man of God has declared, Seven days you will die. I said, God bless you, sir. Mommy Lo said, don't pick a, his call. I said, no, I will pick so that he will be assured that I'm alive. Seven days, the team passed. He called, hello. Ah, you are still alive? You are still alive? I said, sir, what have I done to you? Ah, wait, oh, are you sure you are still alive? Maybe it's not Sister Linda because the pastor have declared that you disappear and die. Moka told us that you have died. I said, I'm not dead. I'm alive. I think the man later become my friend. He was telling me, pray for us. That, how, how can this pastor be lying, standing on the pulpit and say, Sister Linda is dead? When they know that I did not die, they begin to pay people to testify against Sister Linda. This will come, we are in the same sea, and we are this, the person will disappear. I don't know what will happen to the person. Another one, even now going to the point that some of our members that are careless, that are not born again, that Jesus, Satan told us yesterday in the revelation, I'm going to use them. 2016, you hear one last year was going to choose him and say, eh, eh I was there. He's nothing. He's just a member, mere member that will just come. He's not a coordinator, neither part of the leadership. He went and lied, and he was telling somebody, come, they will give you money. Go and lie against Sister Linda, one of our members. Hallelujah. Why, Sister Linda, what happened? It is because the message is true. The devil don't want you. It's you because for me, I know Jesus sent me. And I've made up my mind to go to heaven. So he's making people not to believe Sister Linda at all. The message is said that since you refuse to obey me, I had a dream, as Pastor was saying. I had a dream after my encounter. I was sleeping in my house. Then I saw they kidnapped me in the unfinished building. Then I saw pastors coming there. Some pastors I know them, some I don't know them. So they were telling me that Grandmaster, our Lord, we have captured her. Set and enter. Ah, then the devil now said, Listen, if you bow to me, if you decided not to say this testimony, 
all these pastors, both white and black, some white people, I don't even know the but they are big, big pastors. They are pastors, if you see there. He said, I am going to make them to be inviting you in their churches. They will worship you. They will give you money. You will be praised. You will be going to their synagogues. All of these pastors, they will spoil you with money. You will have the world. That is Satan was telling me. Just cancel that message. Just abandon that message. Then I now told the pastor, I say he's just deceiving people. He don't have any kingdom. Then they were now, the pastors, they were now did it in their hand like this. Kill her, kill her, kill her. Then Satan turned to a lion, black lion. I was coming and Satan said, I will be eating you bit by bit. Since you refused to accept my offer, I woke up. Whole and behold, as I woke up in my parlor, I saw one pastor sitting down. Eh? Then, you know, <laughs> Sister Linda, how are you? I said, fine, sir. Uh, I've, I've come for long, but I noticed you were sleeping. So I said, let me wait for you to finish sleeping. Uh, actually, I'm, the church, I'm a pastor here for Omega Fire Ministry. I'm, a, I'm representing Omega Fire Ministry in Sierra Leone. And Justin Suleiman heard that you have a message for him. He said, I should come and collect the, the message. Only me and him in the house. I said, Jesus. I said, who, who directed you here? He said, hey, you don't need to tell me. <laughs> God is directing us. We know you are here. So I now quickly stood up and sit on my chair. I, was, I said, well, did he tell you that I have it on CD or what? God did not tell me to say it like this. So he was looking at me. Then I began to feel headache. Then the Lord said, he's trying to, he's doing something, like want to read your mind. Then I told him, I said, stop reading my mind. Then he said, ah, how do you know? How do you know? I said, don't read my mind. What is your problem? Sir, please, I don't have message, a uh, physical message for your, your pastor. Tell Johnson Suleiman, if he knows his hand is clean, he don't need to send for his message. Just go, sir. So quickly, think that they were coming in. Pastor Mema were going. So they met him there. Pastor Mema said, where are you coming from, sir? He quickly picked race and was going. Then since then, Pastor Mema said, People, somebody should be still with Sister Linda in the house. Ah, he now told me that you cannot escape. Sister Linda, you will not escape. We, we, we are seeing you in our palm as you are walking. Then I said, hey, pastors, I now know that this Christianity that you are killing yourself for pastors, you don't know who your pastor is. Go and pray. This pastor that they are, they are, they are sweating you and you are hailing them. The day Jesus will give you real message for them, your pastor that you are fighting for now will be the one who say kill him. My own pastor denied me. I want to tell you because if you don't know, you will be believing that what they are saying about Sister Linda is true. Persecution upon persecution. Persecution upon persecution. What about the brethren in Horemo? Some of you believers here, you say, God reveal me. God expose me. Is it not our prayer? And when God say, now, okay, this, this brother is like this. This coordinator is like this. This person is not ready yet. Although he's in a member of Horemo, but he's not holy. And they became offended. How can she say something like this? Because they cannot bear persecution. They cannot bear the rebuke of the Lord. And the Bible has told us that Jesus said, those who love you rebuke, they chastise. I don't know how your Christian life is. Little thing your husband say, if you go to, if you don't put on Yeri, I will send you back to the village. You went and buy Yeri. Your pastor say, if you don't put Yeri, you will not take communion. You are so weak. Little temptation, you will just drop everything and go. Some of you have backslide already. Some of you started with Sister Linda giving the CD. When the pastor said, burn that CD, quickly go and gather with your own common sense to say, ah, ah. but this CD, since I watched this CD, I never become a witch. I did not go into sin. I even became more holy and fear God. God. You cannot read between the line for yourself that ah uh ah -uh, this girl that says a witch. How many years now she's still saying can a witch be, be telling people to live sin? In my country, when they were doing phoning program, a brother, a boy, a man called and said, "Hello, Pastor. We thank God for you people like to tell us that Sister Linda say Sister Linda is from the devil and the marine. Sister Linda is evil. Thank God. But Pastor, don't you know that it's a shame that demons are the one now living the sea to tell us that hell is too much. We should not go there. When you pastors are the one in the church are not telling us not to go to hell, can't we accept this demon? Let the demon deliver us." Hallelujah. 
Then they put off the brother phone and hello, hello, ah, we have lost this caller. You did not lose the caller because what he was saying is true. You that you say yourself, this message, Sister Linda, I was shocked when we went to India. A Indian woman, nothing, told me that your message changed me. Eh? This message I've reached here. I want them to be compiling some my pictures to see to see people. We went to Uganda. The ma- people know Sister Linda. When we went to Togo, the coordinator invited some pastors. There's some pastors said so we are not coming so that Sister Linda will not go and call our name. Eh? They know me here again. What is this? There's a country that Daddy was going to see, Bini Republic or what? They refused me visa. They say I should not go and call their name there. That Daddy Rika can go, but me, no way. Because I don't know, is it the ambassador, is a redeem or whose church that they know me? I was not going to confuse their people there. Because of this gospel, I was, I was stopped not to go to that country. You think we are playing? How many poisons? They have poisoned my food. How many times? Insult, molestation, lie, cook up story. This Iman, Iman that is on the internet that say, I drink Cicelina is this. The anger is going with, he wants us to compromise. You, you were part of the boys looking at our house, watching over if we travel. They used to come to guide the house. Even when we are around, they will come to help. In the morning, they go to the camp. In the night, they will come and say, security. There are five of them, they will be changing it. So he was one of them. His own time, if we are not around, we travel. He told us that the one, last year in youth conference, one of these girls that came from nowhere, from Taraba, first time to come and get happy to come to Arimo, he picked that girl, want to go and sleep with the girl in Dadereka house. The girl jumped the fence and ran to one of her neighbors and said, please help me, I don't know this place, I'm from Taraba. One, one brother, his name is Ima, he carried me, he want to rape me, I don't know. The woman said, Give her 100 naira and say, go like this and go to the camp. The lady went to the camp. When he went back, he told the mother, I will not go to all the more. The, the, the brothers there, they are, they are rapists. One of them want to rape me. The mother was angry, went to our coordinator. Hey, you people, you will carry our children to Abuja and this uh, holiness people, they will go and sleep with our child. The pastor said, what happened? Explain. They called him, huh? God is my witness. I did not do it. Even me, I was pitying him. I said, ah. Maybe it's a liar. What is this? We went to the neighbor. I went there. I said, please, you know we are not around. Is there any time a girl jump over the fence? I went, me, this brother here, brother Jeremiah, because the people are his tribal people. So I carry him. That is how I should go with him to go and ask the people. That was Pastor Apollo's wife. The woman now said, yes, they are waiting for daddy to come because since we are in the camp, doing program, we used to stay in the camp. That truly there is a time a girl jumped the fence and said there is a brother that wants to rape her in your house. What is his name? I begin to call the name of the brothers that used to stay in my house. I say, OG, Godwin. The woman said, no, one name, one name. They will say, Ima. I say, eh, hey, hey, Ima. We went to the camp. Ima, how dare you carry a woman to pastor house? You call yourself a brother. Emmanuel Bulus is in, is in is a prophet now in, in, in Benin, and I had us. He have opened church. Some of some of these members are going there, and I now say Emmanuel Bulus, how dare you? Even his colleagues, we are saying that even if you want to backslide, is he in the pastor house? You want to carry a woman to go and sleep? I did not. I did not. I did not. He was hiding his mouth. So Daddy Rika said, you are a liar. You, can, you are not fit to be in the house of God to serve God in this spirit. Since you are hiding your heart, leave. They count money, give him and transport. Go where you want to go. Before he leave, one of his colleagues came and said, Ima is denying. <laughs> See this lady sitting here. One of the members came in, coming to church. They have been fumbling with theirself. So Ima, this is your life. Before we finish, another sister said, even me, Ima was toasting me now. Telling, because he's not married, he will come to this. If you sleep, you know, I want to marry you, but we need to test ourselves first. He will come to this one. So after this thing happened, other ladies begin to do restitution. That is the time we know that he's an immoral boy. He's not born again. And this person is somebody that, you know, they stay in my house. I see them like my, my husband, tribal people, like my, I love them. Ah, they are Kute people. Loved it. I was even thinking that that girl lied against him. But when the fact comes out, when they send him away for him to repent, 
He called and said, eh, truly, I was just covering up. Truly, I carried the lady to daddy's house. And that is not the first lady. I have carried another lady again. When you people used to travel, and even when I was in deeper life, this is my problem, immorality. I, I defied deeper life altar. I sleep with girls on the altar. Did you confess in deeper life? No. Who deliver you? When I hear that the Nika message, I became converted. Eh? So this was your life. Then one of his brother began to tell us he, say, he raped a small girl in Benin when they were here. I sat down and said, hey, with all this holiness we are hearing here, this worker will be a snake, a green snake, green girl. Because if you know the Emmanuel Bulus, you think that he, he don't even know anything. He walk as if he, he cannot kill fly. When he come, and then he now say, in fact, he was telling one of his friend, his colleague, in fact, God has forgiven me. When I pray, I saw demon come out of me. And the Lord said, from today, I'll make you a prophet. He came out open place here. And he's prophesying. Why is angry with Sister Linda? He came up and said, people in the movement, many leaders, wives are witches, begin to bring confession. He told somebody, I will scatter all the more. I will make people to live. And begin to say, oh, some of the leader wives, many of them are witches. And this one is a way. People begin to call, Daddy, what is this? What are they? Confusion. And people were thinking, Sister Linda. Uh -uh. Daddy told me, I said, you know what? Don't be confused. Let's pray. This imam, what you want to do in Orimo. If you want to play Orimo on gratefulness, you that you were nothing, Orimo pick you and give you life. You want to fight the finger that fed you, that make you to think you are righteous today. We are praying. Go, we expose him. When we pray, the, me, I was not thinking he's an evil person. I was just thinking that maybe backsliding is he does wickedness. The Lord shows that he's not clean. Then I said, see, imam is not even clean. So when he came to the camp, they told him, God has exposed you, you are not clean. Then he now said, eh. So Mommy Linda said, I'm not clean, but I'm going to make a message for her. So that is the message. He now came up and said, eh, I had a dream. Mommy is a snake. He's eating people in the camp. He's swallowing children, all these things. And say, yeah. And one of his colleagues, that all of them came from Taraba, told him that, say, you, you are mad. How dare you reveal this message against mommy? You, because they rebuke you, you are not doing revenge. He said, leave me alone. If you even talk to me again, the next part three, I will say you too, you are a wizard. <laughs> so, when I see people believing him on internet, I say, see, I don't know why you want be any little thing, toast through and fro with any kind of doctor. Hey, mommy, Lina, they say, hey, this. All of them, I raise up my hand, none of these persecutors, we come to you from leaders to anyone. I am standing here. We tell you that Mommy Linda have done with us physical sin. Or to say, I shouted at people. I embarrassed people. To say, because I'm the mother in the ministry, I step on people. Never. Even in coordinator matter, I don't put mouth. If God give me a message, that is see what God say. Whatever God, that he wants to do with it. Me, I'm a radio. When God put message, I will declare when I finish, I go off. Hallelujah. So if you hate me, you hate God. I don't have anything against you. But if you pray, you are the one prayer and say, God, reveal me. God, expose me. And God says, okay, I will expose you. And now you are fighting me. Why are you fighting me? Don't fight, Sister Linda. Please. I love everybody, but I will never compromise. Even if you are my best friend, if the Lord reveal you are a witch, <laughs> and the Lord say exposed, I will look in your eye and say, Sister, you are not part of us. Because I will not go to hell for nobody. Many people are in hell because of friendship. Many people are in hell because of relationship, a relative, a my husband. Some people, because they were covering sin, hey, it's my friend. If I talk now, hey, this pastor truly is sinning, but let's cover this pastor. Hey, it's my husband. Truly, my husband is not righteous, but let me cover. And they will die before their husband go to hell. And they will die before that pastor go to hell. And they will die before that friend. Leave the same friend in the, in the church. When God has revealed it, this your friend is not clean. Expose this your friend. Hey, I like this, my friend. If I talk now, and eh, people, and then God will know. And you will die, and God will say, you are part of those working for the devil. You want me to go to hell? I will not. All this suffering I'm suffering, I was cast out of my country, run out because of Jesus Christ. I've been there for many years. Going to those churches, pay tight, love them. 
but today they hate me because of Christ. They are saying Sister Linda's name is a snake. It's a snake. Some of them, their relation, their, their daughter, they have the same name. They never know the name is a snake. It's because Sister Linda now is exposing it and says it's a snake. So please, my brother, my sister, before I round up, I want to show you something. You know me? <laughs> I like showing people something so that you will not be deceived. Because tomorrow God will say, didn't they even show you? When she was talking, you did not believe her, but even show you some things. These pastors that are making you to be a fighter, that you cannot be a persecution. If they rebuke you in the church, they discipline you, a member reports you, you say, how dare the member, and this brother say about me, this sister say about me, you enter into a fight. Come and see the spirit. My brother, start this thing, let them see something. This first pastor I'm going to show you, maybe some of you have seen it, is fighting for his papa. He's not fighting for Jesus. So some of you, all this molestation Christians are giving Jesus. You will never hear any pastor come in the year and say, please don't talk to Jesus like that. Nobody. But talk about their papa in the Lord. They will want to kill you. I don't know what happened with uh, one, one freeze, one Mr. Freeze in the internet correcting Oedipo and then the children of Oedipo. It's plenty. So me, I say they should not speak well. Begin to insult the boy. How dare you talk to our papa like this? How dare you? And begin to insult on the pulpit and even pray for lion spirit to come upon the people, members to go and be fighting. Anybody that talk against your papa, fight. That's why some of you, you want to kill for your papa when they rebuke them. See? Play it. Anybody saw to Oedipo again, I'll, I'll, I'll pray you to. He may not talk, me I'll talk. You can't insult my father when I'm alive. Insult my father when I'm alive. Come tell that the freeze. Did I hear him talk about Yodeko again? If I don't finish him. Insulting me, I won't call, But insult Yodeko. That bastard. Tell him. Any day I hear him talk about Yodeko. Do they know his father? Yodeko will not talk about I can't be alive. You insult my father. Come here alive. I, I. Cause today was born. And the, the members are I'll healing. Fight, no, I'll fight that is man to the point that he said, what trouble is this? I will arrest him. I will, lock, I will go to court. Let, how much does he have? Somebody was a newscaster. Who they pay? How much they pay? Who does not even strike in Lagos? He's a poor man. who will deal with you. They've sacked him even. Okay. He's not sacking him. He will go to, he will go to cemetery. He will go to cemetery. I will send him to cemetery. A pastor goes to close. kill somebody. Because Never they, stay where they're insulting your parents. Never. Nobody can sort my parents where I am. You are not born. I will tear you to pieces. Lift your hands. I love you. <laughs> Lift your hands to heaven. The part that makes you conquer the unconquerable. Mm -hmm. Now be them. baptized with it. <laughs> the part that will make you take charge wherever you appear come upon you. Mm -hmm. Where you will fight and take charge. In the name of Jesus. From this day, that spirit that is upon me, mm -hmm. that makes me to dear anything, mm -hmm. that same Holy Ghost turn you to another man. You did hear? That's why the Christian today cannot take persecution. You rebuke them, they are angry. How dare you talk to me like they don't correct me. Sister, this dress is you will take you to hell. Don't talk to me like that. Don't judge. They are their flesh is paining them. If the papa is shouting on the puppy like this, are you oh, the poor God? Are you the one that call him? Even if they correct him in, in error, is he not you can't you take it as persecution? Is it to come on the pulpit and begin to say, I will kill, I will this. I am just telling you people because if you cannot endure persecution, you will go into fighting flesh. And the Bible will tell us that if you, you must suffer persecution, Jesus suffered persecution and overcome Satan on the cross. That's why the Lord gave him a name above all a name. He did not just come and then take over the power from Satan. He suffered it and get the power hallelujah 
You that you are here, you are a child of God. You don't want to suffer. They rebuke you. Say, don't rebuke you. They discipline the church. You leave the church. They say, don't do this. You are angry. You are not ready for heaven. They go to the internet, blast your papa. You are very angry. How dare you talk to my papa like that? What is your problem? They tell you, yearly will take you to hell. You are angry. You cannot sacrifice anything for God because you are in the flesh. You are not ready for heaven. Your husband say, I don't want you again. If you don't put perfume, you compromise and stop coming to chapter meeting. Sister, what happened? And God will help us. I'm still following people in the internet. So don't worry. You have failed God. Next one. This one, pastor is fighting openly. He's going for evangelism. You know. Some of you used to go for evangelism and fight with the sinners. God will use, Satan will enter those sinners to test you if truly you are born again. If what you are preaching to the public is true, now, a sinner will come and be saying, but pastor, leave this place. You enter into fighting. Who's, who, which God are you deceiving? This is it. They, don't, they can't take problem, trials, temptation. They will not. The pastors today and the members of uh, churches today, they don't want persecution. They even pray against persecution. And how can they go to heaven without suffering? See? The next one. Openly. In a... <laughs> He's fighting with the evangelism material. <laughs> See, with his microphone, fighting a sinner. You say you are a pastor. Maybe the sinner have told you something is paining you. For you to overcome flesh, you started fighting. And when they finish, they will go to the church and say, "Receive power." Which power? Are you seeing? This is Ghana. This one is Ghana. To tell you that the spirit is everywhere. Can you see? Sinners are coming among pastors to, to separate them. He's fighting. Forget about his Bible and put his microphone down. Go and fight. When he finish, he will come and say, Jesus loves sinners. Are you seeing? See? See him now. See him going shamefully. Sinners are laughing. How with Christianity? Don't be defied. That's why Muslims are not taking us serious. Because there's no example. The Bible lifestyle is, is dead. It's dead. They will stand on the pulpit, tell you holy, holy, I'll tell you something. They are not. They, they will tell you, if you have anger, you go to hell, they have it. They will tell you, don't do that. They will do it. Next one, come and see the next one. Pastor fights with his own wife in the church. That is it. Maybe the wife have insulted him. He has flesh. I can't take this. And the, you see? You see him now? He's fighting with the wife in the church. And the member is fighting. Pastor, leave mother now. Pastor, leave mommy alone. Pastor don't want to hear. See? Fighting the wife. See? Maybe they started the quarreling in the house. They cannot bear persecution. They cannot endure hardness. Even if you have an unbelieving wife, you don't need to fight her. Your husband is not born again. You don't need to fight him. Your daughter, your son is not born again. Don't fight them because fighting is a sin. You have to be calm. Be wise like serpent and harmless like dove. That is how Christians should behave. But see, talk, go to the next one very fast. I'm rounding up. To see. What is an angry pastor? Those ones that are saying, hey, we are evil, we are this. Compare their life with our own. Angry pastor cause a man suffer for six years. This pastor went for evangelism and a man provoked him and said, I'll let cause on you 600 years. See what Provoking him. Instead of praying for him, forgot to forgive him. See video. We are going to punish your papa. If you don't this father, swear to God, come out. I'll beat you now. See the I'm just now. I go come out your just now. You say that. Cross to me. Cross to me now. I said you I go come out your just now. Before I go inside there. Call punish you finish up. Leave this idiot sir. I hear you want to tell me. Hold this man in the first place. Because this case, even though this man that has this house that fear, this man they don't need to be beaten. You are a madman. I will come out your teeth. Say I hear you. Say I hear you. Say I hear you. 
They want to make us now. He's praying to God. That boy said that they can't stop. Let this boy suffer for six hundred years. Let this boy take until he go to prison. You go cheap, you go can you go prison? Hear what he say here. I will not say you are a man of God. Hear what the person say. If your cause catch me, then I know you are a true man of God. That's why you go to this street and preach and do say I beg which pastor. You hear? He let us. Oh God, this man insult me. Let him have problems. Let him suffer 600 years. The man said, If your cause catch me, then you are a true man. I will get out of this place. You are a madman. How can a sinner see a pastor and say you are a madman? Because there is no respect against Christianity. Because the pastors, they, maybe if he seemed like this, maybe he was inside a church, they rebuke him. He now say, God have come in. You cannot bear to be trained. Now he says he's a pastor. See his attitude. Some of these people, they discipline them in the church. They say, we cannot stay after us. We know the doctrine. God have called us. Let's go and open church and see them. They are the one going to bosses and be fighting there, taking offering, lying gospel. And they don't want persecution. Play the next one. I am showing you because here in Orimo, we want to tell you that all the suffering you are going through is part of your reward in heaven. Please, quickly, this is a Jamaican pastor. To tell you that the sin is everywhere, the same thing. The pastor said, Jesus said, my church is dirty. Jamaican pastor is doing uh, evangelism. A, a Rastafarian was telling him that, keep quiet for you to just preach and go. He started the fight with the Rastafarian. See what happened? Keep your position. Keep your position, demon. See it and keep your position. See it and keep your position. Don't hear what he said because we, we hear their language because we speak the same Creole with Jamaica. He is saying that Satan, you don't have any power here. That we have taken over here. Jesus, take over. Satan, you don't have any power here. And see what he's going to do. Now he that says Satan don't have power. See what he's going to do. Position. Where is your position, Satan? Where is your position, Satan? I am here. Where is your position, Satan? Where is your position, demon? I'm a man of God. Satan, where is your position? Started fighting, enter into the flesh. Satan said, Okay, you say you have power. And started fighting. See, Pastor, see, Pastor, fighting a drunkard, a, 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 this wayward people, that you went there to preach to them, to change them all. And they are reacting. Say, Pastor, leave us alone. Is it today they have been shouting at all? Sister Linda, you are a liar. Did we fight? It is not by fight. See now. See, these are the pastor. That they will be telling you that, hey, don't listen to them, holy, holy. These are the pastors. See, can you see? Can you see? Fighting because they have in their flesh. If you insult them, they are very angry, even on the pulpit. How dare you talk to me like this? How dare you say I'm an evil pastor? How dare that sister Linda say eh, this pastor is not of God? How dare they will even want to kill me, even want to beat me? And they are the ones saying that God did not call sister Linda. The difference between we and them. They say only oh, the more is a cult. But see our members. See how they are coming up. And compare them with your own that you say you are the one God called. Which one are you seeing? The righteous holy, blameless life in them. So I am telling you, is there any other one? Play it if there's another one. I'm telling you, persecution is part of the race for heaven. Don't run away from persecution. Fight break out after a mega church pastor asks for. This pastor is telling members to bring $1,000. If you don't have, you will say ATM is there, go and bring. That is what they know. Go and bring. And then the boys in the area say, this pastor is wicked. He's gathering our money and he's living in a poor environment where poor people are. He's not even helping us. They enter the church, scatter the church. Soon and very soon, this is what is going to be happening. Members will be entering the church and tell the pastor, give us our money. 
because their eyes is going to be open. You are not teaching them for heaven. You are not telling them what it means to be a Christian. You only tell them prosperity. And when they don't prosper, you are the only one getting prosper. They will come and fight you. This is it. See? Guys, this has a lot more to do than just politics. He was on news. They call it what a shameful thing. Church accountability. Taking congregations to task for not serving the, the community they in their, their estimation their as those churches should. They say something doesn't add up when a pastor makes a lot of money, <laughs> drives a luxury car, and yet the people who live near his church are in poverty. In the church, fight. A scuffle inside the sanctuary after New Era Detroit protests during a worship service. The area service. people say you are wicked. You have Zeke, never the wanted to do charity in this no area. no apologies for the dust up at Great Faith Ministry Saturday. Only the reasoning See behind See it. The church situation member have the area on his ear. Bigger than just Wayne T. Jackson. This is about black churches and black pastors who live a lavish life on behalf of the people and they're not giving back to their community. He's referring to Bishop Wayne T. Jackson, the wealthy See, pastor the that welcomed pastor Donald Steve. Trump, drives a Rolls Royce, and lives in a mansion. Zeke was there for the offering Saturday. I mean, they started the offering at $1,000. And then they said, if you don't got $1,000, then do 300 and if you if you if you don't got if you don't got cash then we got atm machines i don't understand that logic i don't understand that way of thinking and i don't understand that to be what religion is that is not how religion is the people are tired because when they come to churches come and so see come and so see they are not preparing you that christianity is like this is like that that's why little thing they backslide a wife, they will not tell you, patient with your husband, husband, patient with your wife. Any little thing, if they are, if they married, you know, so you pack and go. There is a church, they told us, I think it's winners, they say, they don't take the oath for, say, for better, for worse. They no, they don't know what's, it's for better. If worse come, leave and go. There is a former pastor in winners that was telling me that, ah, we don't, in doing, they don't talk for better for us. If it's worse, leave, you are not under the law. Can you imagine? So how can they be mature? How can they be strong for Christ? Hallelujah. So persecution is part of the gospel. I want to encourage all of you that are here and you that you are hearing me. You that you have backslid, you have backslid, you have gone back to the, 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 out of the faith because of little trials. When you decided to be holy, people laugh at you, your family member mock you and you drop it and go back to your Way one life, go back to your lying, fornication, stealing, uh, wasting time, dressing like a lot, and you call yourself Christian. The Lord is crying. The Lord is crying. And to all those that are standing for this truth, you are still standing from 20 words since the day you give your life to Christ. Pastors that are deciding to preach the holiness and people are leaving their church, they don't bother. I want to give you congratulations. I want to tell you, please don't give up let the world go stay but if you say ah everybody's living which kind of doctrine is this ah this lady testimony if it's of god uh, if or is of god people should be coming and know me i cannot do like this then you are following jesus for for for, for material things if you are following jesus for heaven and you are following jesus to make heaven then you will continue to stand hallelujah if you truly you are following Jesus for heaven and Jesus have told us that we will suffer and then that suffering will take us to heaven, then you will continue to stand because suffering, tribulation is part of Christianity. All the disciples, they die in a painful way. Hallelujah. Painful way. And don't think that the suffering end with them. They were Christian like you. They were sinner like you. When they came across Jesus, they surrendered their life and carried their cross. So same thing we appeal to our own life too. The day you hear the gospel and give your life to Jesus, know that you have come into tribulation because the world don't like light. The world hates darkness. The world don't like Jesus. So you will have trials from your office, from your family member, from your husband, from your wife, from your children. Anywhere, people that are in the flesh that cannot, they will not love you. So please, I want to tell you, Sister Linda, as you are hearing me, I'm passing through persecution, trials, all kind of things. You are seeing that it's like I'm the owner of Facebook. People are saying all kind of things about me and Pastor Rika and the church. But I want to tell you that 
that is persecution for me. I count it all joy. Hallelujah. So here, I want to say to you, I don't know how many of you have gone back. You were not standing strong when there was a heat of trial, temptation. Satan don't go far. When he want to tempt Job, he came through the wife, but Job stood his ground. Hallelujah. Satan wants you to go to hell. And some of you, you have compromised already. Some pastors, you have gone into the flesh. Carnality have taken over. Your mind is evil. Oh, those days, or remember was like, now, it is not like it because they are rebuking you, because they are correcting you. Or oh, now, holiness is hard for you. Let me tell you, please, come back to the Lord. Let's be on our feet. Come back to the Lord. I don't want to go to heaven and other people will be saying, they kill me for Jesus. They beat me for Jesus. My parents sent me out of school for Jesus. I was abandoned and me, I will be nodding my head. Eh, eh. No, I want me to, to tell Jesus something that this is what I suffer for you. That is love. When you love somebody, you will suffer for the person. You will go all out to show the person you love the person. It's a normal thing. When you love your wife, you will do all to please her. When you love your husband, you do all to please him. Your husband will say, ah, my wife, she did this, she did that. What will Jesus say? What will Jesus say if you die now? Oh, what is it? So I don't know who, who is here that you have turned back because of suffering. You have turned back because the thing getting hard. Holiness, ah, I thought that if I give my life to Jesus, I dress holy, I stop boyfriend, I stop all these things, God will bless me, but it was not like that, and you have gone back. Please, let all eyes close. Begin to ask God for mercy. I don't know where you have gone because of persecution, you have gone back. Some of you, because of child bearing, no child coming you are beginning to go back to take anointing oil go back to prophet prophetess go back to all your secret sin ah i don't know what i've carried you back to your vomit begin to ask god i don't know unit leader chapter leader coordinator a member will report you a brother or sister will call headquarter when they judge them, you are very angry this brother i will treat him in this unit i will treat her in this state with that is flesh you don't you can't be here so open your mouth and begin to ask God for mercy. You pastor, you are very angry with your, with your people because they rebuke you. Begin to ask God for mercy. That is the flesh. If you cannot endure persecution, you will not continue. If Daddy Rika tells you his own suffering from the time in deeper life to now, you will sit down and be crying for him. But he endure, and today God is still using him. If, if you must have story to tell in heaven. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. If you truly know you want to revive your life again with the Lord, and truly you have disappointed the Lord, you have gone into diverse sins, you have compromised, truly the standard have gone down. Because of one temptation or the other, you backslide, you fall. You, 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 we, are, you, we are not standing well. Raise up your hand wherever you are. Raise up your hand wherever you are. You that want to rededicate your life again to Christ. You that want to tell the Lord, Father, I really put you to shame. Devil laugh at you. Jesus, God boasts because of uh, Job. He told Satan that go and try my son. If Job would have uh, fallen for Satan, Satan would have been laughing at God. Didn't I tell you? But make God proud. This is how Christian we should do. But some of you, little trials, you renounce the Lord. Come on, and Robert, say, renounce the Lord. You renounce. You don't want to die. Raise up your hand. Wherever you are, please come in front. Please come in front quickly. You that you are down here, as you are coming, tell the Lord, Father, a new appointment. I want to start a new life with you. Truly, I've left you. Truly, temptation, I don't know, I can't stand. Any little trials, any temptation, any um, persecution, I will just drop. I used to lie. Anytime trials, Father have mercy. I can't stand for you. I don't even have boldness to preach about Jesus. I used to be ashamed to preach the gospel. That is not a Christian life. You want to go and preach where you see people, you are ashamed. Even your holiness dress, you are not proud of it. And people will be laughing at me. That's why you have entered into holiness fashion. And you will go to hell. We don't fashion holiness. You dress decent. Don't do all this work 
worldly styles. Begin to ask God for mercy and tell the Lord to give you boldness. Boldness not to be ashamed. Boldness to stand in time of trials. Boldness in persecution, whatever name they call you. You are a demon, you are smelling, you are a witch, you are this. As long as you know you are not a witch, you are not a wizard, you are confused. You pastor, you are a fool because you are preaching holiness. Others are living your ministry. Come and tell the Lord. That Lord, I don't care. Give me the spirit not to care what people say. Some of you, because of your friends, you don't want to give to holiness. They will laugh at me. They will come in here. Because of marriage, hey, I will not marry. Which man will want to see uh, holy, holy? Not Begin to tell the Lord, I've disappointed you. Father, I've disappointed you. This is not a, how Christians will live. Father, make me to be a true Christian. Oh, I am a pastor. I'm an evangelist. Truly, I used to fight. I used to show anger when I go out for evangelism. But this is not how we should be. We should be light of the world. Our light should shine. That is our behavior. People should know that we are Christian. We are different. We should not be displaying evil, anger, fighting. It is not part of Christianity. Lord, show us mercy. Brutality is for Satan and his demon. Lord, give me a peaceful heart. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord to transform you. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord to make you a strong Christian, not a baby Christian. You want to be a strong Christian. That no matter what they say to you, you will dis you you will make heaven in the name of Jesus. You coordinator, tell the Lord, I don't care whatever thing they say against me, my people wrote against me, I will stand. I will not backslide. I will love everybody. I will love. Jesus said we should love our enemy. Your neighbor you are not talking to, go and make peace. Leave vengeance for God. You that they have carried you to court, make peace with your enemy. Tell the Lord. I want to make peace. I am young. I am young. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am young. I am young. I am young. Till the day Christ will come. Jesus, I am young. Raise up your hands and begin to commit yourself to the Lord. Tell him as I'm singing this song, you are not going back to any sinful life again. No matter, even if the going get tough, even if my church they send me out of the synagogue, even if my parents dis disown me, even if my husband say marry the end because of holiness, I am your, I am your. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. Oh, I am your own. I am your own. Till the day Christ will come, Jesus, I am your own. Till the day you will come, Savior, I am your own. I am your, I am your, till the day you will come, Jesus I am your, till the day Christ will come, Savior I am your, some are drawing back, some are denying you, but me till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your. Till the day you will come. Savior, I am your. Oh, I am your. I am your. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your. Some are going to sin. Some are going back to the world. But till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your. Tell the Lord you are yours. Tell the Lord I am your own, Jesus, from today. I don't want to go back to sin. I don't want to withdraw. No matter the temptation, the trials, from today upward, 
make me to be a soldier. I will not retrieve. I will not go out of the way till you come. I am your own. I am your own from today. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Father, we exalt you. Thank you for this, your children. They have come forward to identify with your word, to agree with their situation, to believe that you can change them, that you can give them a new story, that you can give them another beginning. Thank you for the second touch you have given to them. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our Father, we bless you. Thank you for this word that you have spoken. Your words say, how possible are right words. This word that came from you have affected this category of your children that are here now. Oh God, be merciful to them in Jesus' name. Forgive every deficiency and shortcoming in their lives in Jesus' name. Oh, their submission to fear and threat that has, is responsible for their compromise in one way or the other. Oh God, as they confess before you, show them mercy and forgive them in Jesus' name. Thank you, oh God. Open their eyes to see the value of Christianity. Cause them to know that persecution is part and parcel of Christianity. In Jesus' name. You say for those that will live godly in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. Oh God, cause them to appreciate persecution in Jesus' name. Cause your children to rejoice and be glad even in persecution in Jesus' name. You say, blessed are you who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for this is the kingdom of God. Oh God, cause them to see joy. To see that in persecution, they have identified with you. Let their reward come in Jesus' name. He said, blessed are you when all men, when men shall say all manners of words against you falsely for my name's sake. You say that they should rejoice. You say we should rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is our reward in heaven. Oh God, cause your children to rejoice in persecution. In Jesus' name. Even when the apostles were flocked for preaching the gospel, they were even excited and rejoicing that they could be flocked for the purpose of preaching. Oh God, this old time way, this old time religion, Cause your children to return to it in fullness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Restore the value of Christianity in the lives of your children. The church is marching on. Cause them to march on that even the gates of hell cannot stop them. Even the gates of hell cannot block them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For this word that you have spoken to your children. Let this word remain in their spirit. Cause the pastors to be in great light of truth. Cause the pastors to go back to their congregation. And begin to preach the genuine gospel. To know that persecution is part of ministry. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. We commit these ones oh God unto you father. In the name of the father. In the name of the son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout a glorious hallelujah. 
In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
I believe believe you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You are my Lord and Savior. Say 